we'd invite everyone to come in and sit down. We appreciate uh, your attendance here today. The Triangle Interfaith Alliance uh, has sponsored this uh, prayer service, and we sure appreciate your attendance here. And we're especially grateful for those who will be uh, participating and offering their own prayers and thoughts. My name is William Calhoun. I'm with the Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints, and I'm pleased to be here with you. Uh, we sure appreciate your support, and um, I really have enjoyed my association with the uh, Triangle Interfaith Alliance. And uh, the uh, object, really, or uh, the objective of unity and community, and in a way that um, celebrates not only what we all share in common religiously, uh, but also what keeps it, what makes us different and unique in our various religious traditions. And I value that and really value the um, coming together as one. And I think that the theme for this month of unity and diversity is one that really captures much of what, uh, what the Triangle Interfaith Alliance is about. So we thank you for being here. Um, we're especially thankful to uh, Geshe Gelek and to those here of the B Buddhist community for opening up this beautiful building for us and uh, allowing us to meet here today. To provide an introduction into, uh, for this building and for, uh, for, our, for Buddhism itself, uh, I'd like to invite uh, the Triangle Interfaith Alliance board member Elise Strevel up uh, to, to introduce us. Thank you. Thank you, William. The Kadapa Center welcomes all of you. Thank you for making the effort to be here. We welcome you with arms wide open. And I really thank the Triangle Interfaith Alliance and all of you for the privilege of hosting this precious gathering. Uh, I have been asked by um, some people to provide a brief explanation of this place and what we do here, in addition to having a train go by. <laughs> We try to picture our prayers traveling on the train to other places when, they, when it goes by. So I'll give a moment for it to pass. So I've been asked to provide a brief explanation of this place and what we offer here because it's an unusual setting for many of you who've never experienced this before. So Buddhism is a tradition that offers all individuals, regardless of relig religious persuasion, a way of exploring the true role and purpose of our lives as human beings. The tradition takes its name from the word Buddha, which means the awakened one. Buddhism essentially stresses the fundamental importance of studying our own actions of body, speech, and mind, with the main emphasis on the mind and how it works in everyday life. It's about what we can do to deepen our understanding of ourselves by using the privilege of intelligence to recognize how precious this human life is, how interconnected we are to all sentient beings, and how our own happiness cannot be separated from the happiness of others. Buddhist teachings can be considered as a philosophy for anyone to use to tame their minds and to nurture the compassion and wisdom for the benefit of themselves and others. The teachings can inform and deepen the understanding and practice of whatever, whatever religious or ethical beliefs you hold. Or Buddhism can be considered a religion if you choose to dedicate your attention to the in-depth study of the teachings. One can also choose to use the imagery and rituals that have developed over the past 2,500 years. So this is what you see around you. The many colors and symbols represent qualities of body, speech, and mind that we strive to achieve. Much like colors and symbols are used by other traditions, such as in stained glass windows or pictures and paintings, crosses or statues. These are just from uh, an Eastern tradition, very obviously. And the images of the Buddhas and our teachers remind us that there are many kind beings from the past and present and in the future all around us who serve as examples and support us on our journey 
in much the same way as great teachers and saints of other traditions do. So even the Buddha, the Shakyamuni Buddha represented here, these are not gods that we worship. They are great teachers that uh, we are reminded are around to help support us with the teachings that they have put forth and continue to do so. So nothing in here is magical. Everything is a tool to help our minds. For example, prayer wheels, such as this, and there's many outside, uh, they re and the prayer flags remind us to share our prayers and good wishes of love and compassion with all sentient beings. Whatever does not help your mind can be just set aside. So thank you for joining us in this special place. We are honored to have you here. Thank you, Elise. We're honored to be here. We'll move now to uh, our prayer and thought uh, portion of the meeting. I'll just generally introduce those who will be offering prayers and thoughts. Uh, we're pleased to have uh, Madhu Sharma from the Hindu community, Clara Davis from the Unity of the Triangle Congregation, Rabbi Lucy Dinner from our Jewish community from Temple Beth Or, Nancy Barnes from the Baha'i community, Geshe Gelek from uh, the Tibetan Buddhist com community here at the Kadampa Center, Deborah Bromley from the Raleigh Friends Meeting Community. Unfortunately, our Muslim community participant had an emergency arise at the last minute and will un be unable to make it. Uh, and then um, if there's anybody here that would like to share a brief um, thought on unity and diversity, we'd invite you to uh, participate briefly at the end and then I'll share a thought and a conclusion. So Madhu, we'll turn the time to you. Thank you, William. I'm gonna recite uh, a Sanskrit shloka and then give you the meaning for that. Bhumi jal agni vayu namara militayadi sandhyayanti swakam karya nabhinna karya sadhaka. Basically says this is about unity and diversity, and and this particular shloka says, the earth, water, fire, and air, the elements, actually together lead to creation. They form life, but individually, they're not life. But together, as elements together, does form life. So, I am here and praying with all of you that God give us the wisdom to work in unity, to attain peace, harmony, and prosperity in our community. And just remember that each one of us separately cannot actually attain, can, can do the work that we can do it together, and that this is where Triangle Interfaith Alliance is as, uh, you know, uh, doing great work here, and William and um, Nancy have put together wonderful group here, so with that, Thank you, and I'll, who's next? Clarissa. Thank you. Representing, representing unity of the triangle, I will share with you its prayer and affirmation and my personal thought. The prayer, or unity's belief, the light of God surrounds us, and then the people would respond by saying, I am the light of God. The love of God enfolds us, and the people would respond by saying, I am the love of God. The presence of God watches over us, and the response would be, but I am the presence of God. Wherever we are, God is, and all is well. Their affirmation of oneness. There is only one presence, one power, in my life and in the universe, God the good omnipotent. And my closing thought, again, based on the teachings of unity where I've been a member for 32 years, says, there is one God, one people, creator of the one people, position us on planet Earth as a cultural kaleidoscope. And most of us, if not all of us, are seeking one thing, and that is love, respect, and acceptance. Thank you. Thank you, Clara.
Careful. I'm Rabbi Lucy Dinner from Temple Beth Or, here to share with you in this occasion that brings together one week later than we thought, but actually at just the right time. At just the right time as we are this weekend commemorating the prophet Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. and the way that he taught us to unify our voices for justice. At just the right time in the Jewish tradition as we have finished in our cycle of reading the book of Genesis, now beginning the book of Exodus. And as we close the book, we say hazak, hazak, venit hazek. From strength to strength, we will be strengthened. For as the people of the book, it is not in us to close the book and leave it goodbye. Rather, we take the teachings and we become a part of the blessing in the way that we live our lives. And so within our teachings, within our book, the Torah that is the Bible that is embraced by so many traditions, we hear the sacred words, Hine ma tovu manaim shevet achim kam yachad. Behold how good it is that God brings us together, brothers and sisters, and gives us the challenge that we will dwell together as one. Amen. Do you think I can speak without the microphone? Can you all hear me? Oh, they're taping it? Uh, how am I going to, I don't know how I'm going to hold it at the same time. I'll probably mess up. Um, <laughs> no, I'll be embarrassed if you do that. Thank you. Oh, no, no, uh, no. No, I will manage. Listen. I'll okay. figure it out. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Be'ahad. <laughs> uh, thank you very much to the organizers and to the dear uh, Kadampa Center. So grateful to be here. And thank you for allowing me to speak a few words on the Baha'i Faith's principle of unity and diversity. Uh, just to mention, very recently we visited our children in China and had such a, uh, such a blessing to visit the renowned uh, Ning Jing, Ning, Jing Ning uh, Buddhist temple in Nanjing, China. And it was, it was really a wonderful, wonderful experience for the whole family. Um, today, uh, January 15th, marks the uh, 66th anniversary of World Religion Day, established by the Baha'i community and commemorated around the world. Uh, it is in order to celebrate human unity, shared religious values, and help foster interfaith dialogue and improve understanding among the world's religions. Religions in general are the impetus for unity. The Baha'i writings say religion reaches the roots of motivation when it has been faithful to the spirit and example of the transcendent figures who gave the world its great belief systems. It has awakened in whole populations capacities to love, to serve, to forgive, to create, to dare greatly, to sacrifice for the common good, and to discipline the impulse of the animal spirit. Baha'is believe the greatest foundation for unity is the oneness of mankind. First, within the family, by teaching the children the concept of world citizenship as part of the education for every child. Baha'u'llah says the earth is but one country and mankind its citizens. Variations of color, of land, of race, have no importance in the Baha'i faith. In tandem with teaching the children is personal transformation. 
We are asked to strive with heart and soul to bring about unity and harmony among peoples and to build a world wherein the distinction of color will have no place. As an assistance to building this kind of world, uh, in interracial marriage is encouraged in the Baha'i faith. Its writings say, therefore the lamps of unity must be lighted in such a manner that they shall not only unite, but even intermarry. Be sure that the result of this will abolish difference between black and white. By the will of God, may this be so. This is a great service to humanity. We know that scientific studies have proven that every human being is 99.1, 99.9% the same DNA constitution. The, the differences within one ethnic or racial group is more, more, has more variety than those between the two groups. In short, we're all brothers and sisters. A single biological human race with one origin for all people. For Baha'is, diversity is the source of joy, of beauty, and of strength. We think of humankind as different color roses growing in the beautiful garden of humanity. Just like the component parts of the body, the difference reinforceth harmony, diversity strengtheneth love, and multiplicity is the greatest factor in coordination. In the same way, all the diverse religious systems reinforce our learning and our knowledge about God. They are the way to the illumination of the world. For religion is the divine foundation, the foundation ever conducive to life. The teachings of God are the source of illumination for all the world. The very heart of unity and diversity, Baha'is believe, is the overarching principle of the oneness of God and of his religion. Baha'u'llah wrote, inasmuch as the birds of the celestial throne are all sent down from the heaven of the will of God, as they all arise to proclaim his irresistible faith. Therefore, they are regarded as one soul and as one person. For they all drink from the one cup of the love of God, and they all partake of the same tree of oneness. And I'd like to sing you a little song that we used to sing in Nigeria. It's, sorry, my voice. It says, God is one, man is one, and all the religions agree. When everyone learns the three onenesses, we'll have world unity. <laughs> Thank you. I'm not sure who is next coming up. Good afternoon, and first I just want to say thank you from the bottom of my heart for each and every one of you coming here. And I believe that you are present here in this spiritual sanctuary is the seed of uh, unity and diversity, also the blessing in the unity of diversity. So, and I'm not going to say much, I just want to read you know, some prayers. Uh, 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 this first one is for love, you know, immeasurable love. So, uh, as a human being, I believe, you know, love, compassion, joy, equanimity, these are the seed for the unity in diversity. You know? So, first one, the first line is dedicated to uh, love, immeasurable love. May all sentient beings have hap happiness and the cause of happiness. The second line is refers to the immeasurable compassions. May all sentient beings be free from suffering and the cause of sufferings. Then the third line is for joy, immeasurable joy. May all sentient beings never be parted from happiness and the free of sufferings. Mm. The last one is equanimity, immeasurable equanimity. May all sentient beings abide in equanimity and free from bias and attachment and aversion. So, so then conclude with that uh, with some prayer.
prayers for <coughs> all living beings, okay? May all beings everywhere, plagued by suffering of body and mind, obtain ocean of happiness and joy by virtue of our merit. May no living creature suffer, commit evil, or ever fall ill. May no one be afraid to or belittled with the mind weighed down by depressions. May the blind see form and the deaf hear sound. May those whose bodies were are worn with toil be restored and finding repose. May the naked find clothing, the hungry find food, may the thirsty find water and delicious drinks. May the poor find wealth, those weak with sorrow find joy. May the fallen find hope, constant happiness and prosperity. May all who are sick and ill quickly be free from their element. Whatever disease there in the world, may they never occur again. May the frightened cease to be afraid and those bound to be free. May the powerless find power and may people think of benefiting each other. Thank you very much. Thank you. I wanted to thank the Triangle Alliance for inviting us. Um, I'm Deborah Bromley with the uh, Religious Society of Friends, Raleigh Friends Meeting. I wanted to give you a little bit of history about uh, Quakers and then close with a few moments of silent worship in the manner of Friends. Quakers are members of a historically Christian group of religious movements generally known as the Religious Society of Friends. Members of the various Quaker movements are all generally uni united in belief that the ability of each human being to experientially access personally that of God in every person. The various Quaker movements include those that are evangelical, liberal, and traditional Quaker understandings of Christianity. In today's world, you'll find Quakers who believe differing versions of that higher power including worshiping God, nature, or no particular being. Quakers do not have particular dogma. We align ourselves with our testimonies in that we believe in simplicity, peace, integrity, community, equality, and stewardship. Quakers are known as one of the three or four peace churches. Quakers have a long history of being active in social justice. We work in issues to serve the underserved and the persecuted. These actions are spirit-led. In North Carolina, you'll find Quaker meetings that are evangelical, traditional, or unprogrammed. Raleigh Friends Meeting is a liberal meeting, and we hold unprogrammed meeting for worship every first day or every Sunday at 10 a.m. An unprogrammed meeting for worship means that we wait in silence for messages from spirit, the divine, or whatever higher power a person seeks. We feel that we are all seekers and that there is continuing revelation. All are welcome at Raleigh Friends Meeting. Vocal ministry is offered from meeting participants as they are led to do so. So in the manner of friends, I would just like to have us settle in for a few moments of silence. Thank you, friends. Thank you. Is there anybody else who would like to share a brief thought? Would you like me to bring the microphone to you? Would that be easier? I am thoroughly moved by this beautiful panel 
of souls who from their heart offered prayers and uh, shared with us how they worship. Um, I feel very, very moved. And uh, God bless you and your temple for offering this place for us. Thank you. And uh, I don't know what happened to the Muslim friend, uh, but if he has had some health problem, I would like to uh, offer a healing prayer. Um, I will offer it in English, and then if you don't mind, I will offer it in a chant in Arabic. By the way, I am a member of the Baha'i faith as well. Okay. Thy name is my healing, oh my God. And remembrance of thee is my remedy. Nearness to thee is my hope, and love for thee is my companion. Thy mercy to me is my healing and my succor in both this world and the world to come. Thou verily art all bountiful, the all-knowing, the all wise. <coughs> ya Elohi, Esmu Thank you for that. As we conclude, um, I'd like to just share a, a thought uh, from my own Latter-day Saint community. This idea of uh, our differences and yet the goal of coming together as one is an ancient one, as we've seen from the different faith traditions represented here today. It's one that was uh, a challenge for the new Christian church uh, back at the time of Paul and he wrote to the Corinthians uh, emphasizing the differences that were in that community and yet encouraging them to be one and to be united. And he writes, for the body is not one member, but many. 
If the foot shall say, because I am not the hand, I am not of the body, is it therefore not of the body? And if the ear shall say, because I am not the eye, I am not of the body, is it therefore not of the body? If the whole body were an eye, where were the hearing? If the whole were hearing, where were the smelling? And the eye cannot say unto the hand, I have no need of thee, nor again the head to the feet, I have no need of you. Nay, much more those members of the body which seem to be more feeble are necessary. And those members of the body which we think to be less honorable, upon these we bestow more abundant honor. And our uncomely parts have more abundant comeliness. That there should be no schism in the body, but that the members should have the same care one for another. And whether one member suffer, all members suffer with it. For one member be honored, all the members rejoice with it. I appreciate how we've seen a manifestation of that just in these few minutes that we've been together. A concerned prayer for someone of the Muslim faith. Um, thoughts joining us together um, as uh, different faith traditions. I've thought about this um, idea and, and uh, the benefits that come from this diversity, this unity really in diversity. And since I've been associated with the Triangle Interfaith Alliance, I've tried to become a little more educated about uh, the beliefs of those who are here. And it's um, brought some benefits that I didn't anticipate, to be honest with you. And one of those I'd like to share uh, with you today. So just in looking a little bit uh, to try to learn more about the Hindu uh, faith tradition, uh, I came across, and I hope, uh, Madhu, I don't misrepresent this, so you can correct me at the end if I have, but the principle of darshan. And if I'm correct in what I've read and how I'm interpreting it, uh, darshan is the idea that observation is worship. It combines the sense of visible wonder, say, for example, when we stumble across a beautiful sunrise or a beautiful sunset, with the notion that as a kind of gift, a divine gift, the self-concealing gods may at times allow a glimpse of themselves. In other words, may we, we may be sometimes blessed to notice things of which we have been otherwise unaware. And in the act of seeing something or someone, we may engage in a form of worship that brings us closer to the divine. I've thought about that um, in my own Christian tradition. Uh, for example, with the two disciples who suddenly recognized the resurrected Jesus Christ on the road to Emmaus, and how that moment of darshan allows them a glimpse of the divine. But I've also recognized that in my interactions with you that I see in your goodness and in your commitment to principles of integrity and unity and trying to draw closer to the divine, the divine itself. I feel I've caught those glimpses in you and I appreciate you being here today. And I appreciate those who have um, led these prayers today that have once again allowed me to catch a glimpse of the divine. I think that as we continue along this path, of finding these commonalities while celebrating our differences, we can really live the principle of unity in diversity. I say that in the name of Jesus Christ, amen. Uh, we'd like to once again, thank you for being here today. We'd like to thank in particular, Jill Marie for uh, her uh, opening up the center to us today, to Chris and to Brian for providing the technical support. Uh, we sure appreciate your time in being here today. I'd like to at least mention that on February 9th, we're planning to have the annual dinner for the Triangle Interfaith Alliance. There are flyers providing more details about that out by the food, and I hope you will take one and consider coming and joining with us next month. I also hope that you'll stay a little bit longer to mingle with each other and to enjoy the food out there, uh, for which I'd like to thank uh, Nancy Hendershot uh, for bringing and supplying that today. And Elise, thank you, Elise. Thank you once again for being here. I hope you enjoy the rest of the afternoon.